of women movement, it was all over. So Afghanistan also got that kind of ideas. I had to marry in order to go to university. But honestly, I think that uh, now I think that we were already feminists without knowing the word of feminist. My husband was teaching at the university. From the beginning, I told him that I cannot be an obedient wife. So I can be a good friend and uh, we have to have 50% rights, both of us. So we really had 50% and we were famous within the family that uh, when the family were seeing us, they were saying, how is that a 50%? The Afghan communists preached equality between all men and women. They dreamed of a socialist revolution. In that time, we saw کشور خودم با فانتزی می دیدیم در این حال جهاد ما بیشتر آرمانگرا بودیم تا واقعبین جریان چپ طرفدار شورایی به نام حزب دموکراتیک خلق افغانستان فعال بود که ما به این جریان پیوستم اون وقت بر ما و ام فکرها و ام سنهای ما بیشتر چی مهم بود مهمی بود که کشور تغییر کنه نسل جوان حتی تغییر دین و مذهب میخواست The communist ideology was at odds with the Muslim faith. It denied the existence of God. And for many Afghans, that was simply unacceptable. But in Boris, I have a very strong opinion that a person is a man و به اثبات ضرورت داره احساس کردم که کمونیست ها آمدن و ایمان و عقیده ملت ما را نشانه گرفتن The university had become a powder keg. As in many Western countries, opposing political ideologies clashed on the streets. In Kabul, students were split into two rival factions, the communists on one side, the Islamists on the other. The communist movements, the communist movements, فعال شدم و همون گونه که ما میتینگ ها برپا میکردیم تظاهرات برا هم انداختیم اینا هم میتینگ ها برپا میکردن تظاهرات برا هم انداختن یک پرچمی معروف مثلا سخنران بود در این حال یک اخوانی معروف حکمتیار سخنران بود در امول لحظمت تصمیم گرفتم که باید علی نام منظم شد و مبارزه کرد طور می تانیم در برابرش ساکت باشیم تصمیم بری شد که شبنامه ای را ما تهیه کنیم و به نشر بسپاریم در پایان شبنامه هم ما نام جوانان مسلمان را داشتیم این تبدیل شد به نام حرکت هم. Afghans in the countryside had bigger problems. A long drought had ravaged their land. Thousands starved to death, and the king did very little to help them. King Zahir's popularity was in tatters. Some started to plot against him.
On Tuesday, July 17, 1973, while the king was in Italy, the monarchy ended with a military coup. Army officers trained in the USSR turned against King Zaire. His cousin and former prime minister, Daoud Khan, formed an uneasy alliance with the Communist Party and became the country's first president. A republic was proclaimed. The new regime has the backing of Afghanistan's small but powerful army, and that in turn is supplied and equipped by the Soviet Union. The heavy weapons come from the Red Army. I remember that we were in the university when the, um, some noises were started. We, I personally, and a lot of all of the people in Kabul, we never heard them, the jet fighters' noise. Le royaume d'Afghanistan est devenu république. L'armée a pris le pouvoir à Kaboul, la loi martiale est proclamée, des chars gardent les rues, l'aéroport est fermé. Sans répit, la radio demande à la population de ne pas sortir de chez elle. C'est d'ailleurs à la radio que le prince Sardar Daoud, le propre beau-frère du roi Zahir Shah, a proclamé la république. The king was forced into exile. The monarchy's end opened an era of political turmoil that has lasted until today. When President Daoud did a coup d'etat in 1973, the next morning, people were sort of happy. They thought, okay, because President Daoud took power, will change will come, the country will develop, you know, everything will change. President Daoud Khan promised social reforms on multiple fronts. For instance, he would take land from owners and give it to peasants. In the same years, Afghan women became more vocal in claiming their own rights and autonomy. In 1975, when they announced the International Day for Women, 8th of March, I got a present from my uh, fiancé on that, for that uh, reason. So it was somehow we start to be, to say that it is, it should be more equality between men and women and it should not be discrimination. Daoud Khan proved to be an authoritarian president. Suspicious to the edge of paranoia, he persecuted the Islamists who disliked his reforms and his alliance with communists. Daoud was a man who showed that he had to do the Islam in the direction of و ای خودش ایجاد یک حالت و یک روان کاملا نو بود در جامعه افغانستان که ای حالت و ای روان میشه انقلابی بگفت میشه خشونت بار گفت میشه سختگیرانه گفت داود خان ruled the country with an iron fist he suspended the constitution demonstrations were forbidden 
Islamic activists were arrested. Some of them escaped to Pakistan and prepared an insurgency. خاطر دفاع از نیروهای متراکی ما مجبور شدیم انقلاب کنیم This revolution is an Islamic revolution and it has its special aims and goals which is to establish an Islamic a pure Islamic system in Afghanistan freedom of Afghanistan and liberation of Afghanistan The Islamic movement was blaming like the communists that they are saying this and they were blaming, you know, this blaming game between left and right political ideology was a start from the very beginning, which is both of them were extremely unmature. Unmature to lead the country, unmature to guide the people, unmature to keep the great value of national unity among the people. In a few short years, Daoud Khan had made himself powerful enemies. First the Islamists and the landowners, now the communists and the mighty USSR. In a visit to Moscow, Daoud Khan made the fateful decision to break ties with the USSR. The Soviet leader Brezhnev wanted to take advantage of the coup to extend his influence in Kabul. But Daoud Khan refused. A true Afghan, he was too proud to take orders from abroad. Back in Afghanistan, Daoud Khan signed what amounted to his own death sentence. He ordered the arrest of the same communist leaders who had helped him overthrow the king. The assassination in jail of a leftist intellectual triggered a new coup. Kabul was a small circle. It was 200,000 people, and from 200,000 people, maybe 500 of them were involved in these kind of things. If you were part of that circle, you could easily tell that things were coming to an end. In April 1978, supported by the army, the Afghan communists seized power. Overnight, they slaughtered Daoud Khan and 23 members of his family. They called it the April Revolution. En 36 heures de violent combat, le pouvoir absolu de l'autocrate Mohamed Daoud, le prince président, est abattu. Tanks loyal to young communist army officers now guard the palace where President Daoud, the last of the Afghan royal family, ruled. Inside, he and his family, including his young grandchildren, were shot dead when his palace guard lost their courageous battle to defend him. For me, in a single coup, I learned that I had no more country, that 23 members of my family had been killed. Le même jour, et que le reste, y compris ma femme, sont en prison de polichargerie. Quand je suis venu au ministère de la Culture, je travaillais là. Quand je vois que tout le monde était en train de courir, je me suis dit Où vas-tu Et ils m'ont dit Tu ne sais pas. Le coup d'état a eu lieu. Tu vois le palais il y a un feu dans le palais. À 5 h dans le matin, la radio de Kabul a annoncé que le président Daoud was killed with all his family. And that was a tragedy for all of us. I cry a lot, tell you the truth. I cry. My father was so sad, my brothers, because first of all, we knew all President Daoud. And second, he, he was killed with all his family, his daughters, his grandchildren, his sons, his wife, you know. We 
we were feeling that in very near future, they would do something against us. Our colleagues uh, were obliged to fire back, and he and with some of his family members were destroyed. This was the new president, Taraki, and this his prime minister, Amin. Together, they tried to transform Afghanistan into a socialist country. They enforced land reforms and confiscated property. They made education obligatory for girls. Women now had full rights. They were free to study, to work, and choose their husbands. Depuis un an et demi, nous avons accompli plus de réformes que pendant les 50 ans de règne de la monarchie. J'aimerais indiquer que le premier changement important qui a eu lieu dans la vie des femmes après la Révolution est dû au décret 7 qui place toutes les femmes sur un pied d'égalité avec les hommes. To implement their changes, Karaki and Amin used Stalinist methods. They exterminated all opposition, even from the left wing. Islamists were the major targets of repression. Mosques were closed, the veil banned in public spaces. For a conservative Islamic country, it was all too much, too soon. Afghanistan was headed toward the abyss. That was the most brutal time of the history in the country. Thousands of people from all work of life was, was taken and disappeared. از اولین روز رسیدن به قدرت آغاز کردن به کشتن و دستگیری کسانی که احساس میکردن از نایی اینا خطر متوجه شان است. کسی که تسبیح داشت، ریش داشت، سلمان بود، به مسجد رفته بود، در مراکز علمی با اینا به مخالفت پرداختن، یکی پای دیگر اینا رو دستگیر کردن و به قطر رساندن در روز، روزای نخستین رسیدن به قدرت هزارا افغان